Well, hi, uh, Jenna. My name is Eric de Haan uh, from the Netherlands. And as you know, I'm a psychologist. I would like to thank you for your time for doing this interview. Um, Dutch, Dutch. Thank you. Yeah, your Dutch is very good. <laughs> um, I'm going to say hello. <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, I know yeah, you have uh, studied as a psychologist. You have graduated as a psychologist as well. But immediately after your study, you uh, start being a singer. Could you perhaps um, explain who you are, introduce yourself? and how your singing career went. <laughs> yeah, so I was in college studying psychology when I actually got my first record deal. Yeah. So I, I started late singing. Um, I was very shy growing up. Obviously with my being Native American and, and being you know, the only Native American where I lived and kind of had a little bit of an identity issue and insecurity about myself. I was very shy. Yeah. So when I got older, I kind of blossomed and got a, a strength and a confidence in myself. And it was through my voice that I realized that was my strength. And I did not know that. It was just, it was, I was very shy. So huh? I kind of was a late bloomer when I started singing. But I actually was discovered in college when I was studying. But I wanted to get a degree. So I finished yes. college first. And um, I started there. I had my first record on the radio right after that when I graduated. Wow. So it was very, it was a very quick thing. I got signed from one song. I recorded one song. Yeah. Someone saw me performing in my hometown. Yeah. And they said, would you like to sing this song for us? You know, and I said, well, um, yeah, sure. You know, I, I, I'll get paid for it. But they were really had the song written for someone else. Oh. But when they had me come to demo the song for them, they liked my version enough to where they wanted me to be the artist. Wow. So it was, it was kind of a very strange thing that happened. I got very lucky. And this is how you were discovered? Yes. Yeah. Okay. One, one record. I got a record deal. Yeah. Wow. One record. Yeah. But you do just, have a... Just singing. Just singing at home. Just, just singing, singing at home? home. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, and you have an amazing yeah. divine voice. Thank you. <laughs> I'm, yes, one so <laughs> I'm one of your biggest fans. What? I'm one of your biggest fans. Thank you. I, I know you are. You're my best fan. My best fan. Thank you. <laughs> when I read. <laughs> um, you told me you're uh, yeah, native, uh, I know. And to what tribe do you belong to? So I'm Lumbee. I'm yeah. the Lumbee tribe of North Carolina. I also have Tuscarora blood. My mom is Tuscarora, so it's in the Native society, it's very matriarchal, so your bloodline is through your mother. So by blood, I have more Tuscarora, but by my environment and growing up in North Carolina with, is the Lumbee tribe. So I mean, I'm more um, affiliated with the Lumbee tribe through just living among the tribe. The Tuscarora tribe is up in New York State, Yeah. Part of the Six Nations. The Six Nations tribes are, um, um, you know, we're part of the Six Nations. Tuscarora, Nida, Mohawk. Um, uh, we got a couple other that I'm blanking on. But our main thing with the Six Nations are that we are the founding fathers of the democracy. We're the ones who kind of created the American democracy. The whole um, type of government that we have here was founded basically on the... Um, kind of the form and the, the, uh, the way that the government of the Six Nations was. It was kind of like, um, kind of mirrored that. So that's kind of the founding fathers. So it's kind of exciting. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, you just told me uh, that you, uh, well, you started as a singer. You have won nine music awards, was nominated twice for a Grammy for your music and for the music video The Enlightened Time and people would like to see it, it's also on YouTube yes. um, and of course they can buy it at your website if they would like to have the CD yes. or DVD um, and you have also sung during the inauguration of two American presidents Yes. which presidents were they and which song did you sing during the inauguration? 
I sang uh, Change Is Gonna Come, which is a, an old song from the 1960s, sung by Sam Cooke, and yeah. it's a song about during the civil rights movement in, in the Americas with the, um, you know, African-American rights and just, you know, the, the freedom and, and kind of those issues where we had a lot of, um, you know, discrimination and things like that, some racial issues in America. Yeah. So it was during that civil rights time, this song was was written actually in North Carolina, where I, where I am, oh. in my state. Wow. It was written here. So, and the two presidents were President Bush, the, um, the second one, Second one. The, young, you know, the, most the younger, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and um, President Obama. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. Yes. <laughs> um, and in addition to being a singer and a songwriter, you have also written the book, uh, American Indian Story. Yes, it's yeah. right here. Ah, wow, The Adventures of Shakona. Yes, I know. <laughs> I've read it and I love it, but... Can you tell us more about your book? It is, um, I call it historical fiction. So it is uh, a story that I created by myself, but it's also kind of based on, loosely based on the indigenous peoples that came over to the Americas when the Americas were discovered. Yeah. And the American Indians here, the indigenous people, we call it Turtle Island. Um, but it's just, um, there was a, from Russia, there was a land bridge. So during, you know, this is probably about 25,000 years ago. Yeah. Um, that the first indigenous peoples came to the Americas. So there's this land bridge. So the story is based on, you know, coming to, and uh, coming to this beautiful land, discovering, you know, the, the earth and the, 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 the vegetation and just, uh, you know, discovering a new world. Yeah. But also, it's uh, based on a young girl and her journey while she's coming to the, you know, to this place, her new home, and just discovery. And it's kind of a, a rite of passage. Yeah. So kind of a way of her discovering who she is and becoming a confident girl into a young woman, and you know, her trials and tribulations, going through love, going through um, heartache and 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 death. And so there's a lot of, you know, yeah. there's a lot of things that are happening that she has to conquer and overcome. So it's about her strength. But it's yeah. a really great book. It's a, yeah. it's, um, it's got a lot of magic, kind of like Harry Potter. There's a lot of magical things. And um, yeah. I, just, I just think it's a fun book. It's not a kid's book. It's like you said, adults can read it. It's yeah. not just a young adult. It's adults like it. I yeah. do not want to write a kid's book or, to, or write a book that was to dumb down or talk, you know, um, to suit a child. It's very much something that a, a young adult can read and, and yeah. really, you know, um, and understand. Yeah. But it's a great, it's a fun book. I enjoyed writing it. Yeah, and I enjoyed reading it. And I remember from the book that Shakona was entering to this new world and yes. she could take some people with her, but the other people couldn't go to this world, new world, without her help. Is that correct? I, I mean, she, she's, she's the heroine. She's the one who kind of becomes this leader. Yeah. Um, not that she wanted that role, but it kind of fell upon her um, and showed her strength and she realized a lot about herself. So, and actually, you know, a lot, a lot depended on her. She learned a lot about herself. Wow. And it's a high action book too. You know, there's a lot yeah. of action and fun fantasy and things like that. It's, it's, you know, it's a good read, I think. Yeah. And will there be a part two of the book? Maybe. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Uh, three to six months, just a flight time to, uh, to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of work, but you know, that would also require me probably to do another album because my album is based on the book, you know, Lucy yeah. and my songs are in the sequence of kind of how the book is. The book yeah. obviously is more detailed, but yeah. it, t it shows the art of the beginning to, you know, the end when the visitors came. Yeah, this is the CD, which is called American Indian Story. Yes. And how is the CD connected to your book? So it, 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 it kind of like where they're, their chapter titles, it's about the beginning where they came and discovered the new world, 
Yeah. And it just goes through her journey of, you know, um, again, love and um, the Enlightened Time video is about progress and, you know, using the land to, you know, learning different farming techniques and how to use the, you know, the animals and just, and then honoring um, you know, spiritual side of things. So it, it shows kind of an arc of how she is growing as a woman, but also how our people, our people are growing with her yeah. and discovering new things and working together, the solidarity of it. So there's a lot of themes about, you know, working together. So it's not just Native people, right? It's mm. just anyone reading this learns about how they, everyone has their own strength and everyone can make a difference. Yeah. Even if you're one person, you can make a difference. And and who you surround yourself, if it's even a small community that you're around, you can make a difference in the world. So, and everyone has their, their strength. You have, everyone has their, their special thing and she yeah. discovers that. Yeah. So, um, and then of course, the end of the book, well, I don't want to give it away, but at the end of the book, there are new people and, yeah. you know, yeah. about adversity, but also diversity and just, you know, how, so it is, it's kind of, it, the book leaves itself to, kind of like what happens next so yeah <laughs> yeah I, yeah i really love the book and okay. the the most favorite song of this cd is my fav most favorite song first celebration really yeah okay yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> and that's obviously you know when everyone's having a good time of course you like that right big yeah. party <laughs> yeah good rhythm <laughs> yes <laughs> um let me see um you are uh, very talented, you sing, you write books, you write songs, um, but you also played the, the lead role in the movie, uh, The Dinosaur Experiment. Oh yeah, I have that here too. <laughs> ah, wow, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah. Do you plan to do more acting in the future? Yes, I do. Um, there are a couple of projects in the works um, for the next year. Uh, I've got some interest for me playing some different roles. So I just, but I like to be, I don't want to just be um, someone who's hired as an actress. I, you know, I like to be involved and kind of get my input. So anything that I do, I really need to have my heart into it. I want to be a part of it. I need to, you know, believe it. Yeah. But yeah, I want to do more, you know, not, I, I would love to be a big star, obviously, you know, a big actress, but just independent movies, movies that mean something to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, moving forward, The Dinosaur Experiment is a fun movie. Yeah. It's my first movie, so I had to kind of get my feet wet a little bit. But I want to do some more meaningful things, you know, that are not just, you know, fun things, but also things that have some, um, you know, some meaning to it. So, yeah, yeah. I, I have a couple of projects that I can't really talk about. No, I understand. So, you know, but yeah. <laughs> Definitely, I, I want to do some more for sure. Yeah, and I, I remember one other movie. Uh, uh, you know the, the the title better than I. Blue Zone yeah. Cat uh, Boys. Blue Cat Boys. Blue, Blue yeah. Cat Boys. Blue yeah. Cat Boys. That was a small part. I played I played a musician, so it was easy. Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I've that I've was searched. A small for, part, but yeah. it was it was just a, a way for me to get some experience. Okay, I've searched uh, for it, but I don't think it's available here. I don't. Oh, I'll have to get your copy then. Oh, I'll yeah. Copy, yes. Oh, wow. I would love to. Thank you very much. <laughs> Such a surprise. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, we talked about your singing and yeah. you being a native. Um, how important is your native background to the songs that you write and sing? Well, specifically my American Indian Story album, obviously it's a the number one role. I mean, it's 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 what the the album is about about my native culture, but also again based on this um, story that I wrote. That again, it mirrors my life too. I'm you know a, a young woman discovering herself, learning things, her new strengths. So there was obviously me in that role of I mean, shopping on things like that in the book yeah. and the the album as well. My other albums, the, you know, I'm a Native American, I'm American Indian. There's, there's those qualities that I have in some of the songs about my being different than everyone. Um, you know, or, you know, songs like Chameleon, where Chameleon, you know what a chameleon is, where it's, um, you're kind of hot, you're kind of blend in. 
Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's a, like a you know little reptile kind of thing. But it's the whole thing about chameleon is you're kind of blending into society. Yeah. And that song was about me not being afraid of being different and unique. Um, yeah. Not blending in, but actually standing out. So there are songs that they might not say, uh, you know, talk about native life, but it's, um, you know, not really the metaphors, but the meaning behind it is me being different because I'm Native American. So yeah. some of it's more obvious in the songs, you know, with American Story, and some are just a way to show that being unique and being different is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. And that's with any culture. That's any culture. You know, anybody who is unique. Everyone has a unique quality, so there's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to hide to blend in, you know, and be like everyone else. You can stand out. And it, yeah. It's, and it's... That's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we also, yeah, talked about all your experiences as a writer, singer, etc., etc. Uh -huh. But you also have a very good heart. Uh, you are a philanthropist. I'm saying this correct, philanthropist. 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 Yes, yes, philanthropist. Yes. And you have set up the Janice Kids Foundation. Yes. What prompted you to set up this charity? So when I started singing, um, I started singing to Amer to non-native groups, just you know, performing all across the country and even you know outside the United States. But there was um, when I became more a little bit more popular, some of the native tribes in America asked me to come to their communities and perform. And mm -hmm. so I perform a lot of times for the schools on the tribe and the reservations. And I saw that the kids were really eager to, you know, they loved having that attention, someone to pay attention to them and someone to recognize that they're native and they like to see somebody like myself that's a Native American they've never seen perform pop music or popular yeah. music. They've never seen that. So yeah. they they were they would see me perform and after a lot of my shows, they would, you know, ask me tons of questions and they were really, you know, interested in me as a, you know, what is it like to be out there doing what you're doing? So I kind of saw that that there was a need to have more of a conversation than just music and performing. So that's when I started doing kind of um, speech, you know, sp uh, speaking enga engagements, you know, for the yeah. schools and kind of yeah. talking because they really needed that attention. No one gives, no one comes to the reservations and speaks to the kids or talks to the kids. Yeah. Native, pe Native people are kind of ignored a lot in in this country, we're kind of isolated. So there's kind of a bit of, we're not even, you know, around, no one thinks about us. So yeah. I saw the need there. I saw the need for, for the kids. They really want to learn. They really want to exceed, you know, exceed and excel. And so yeah. um, the foundation was a way to, to inspire them to, you know, that there's a life outside of the reservation. Yeah. That they can go, they can, you know, be modern, but you can still have your culture. You can still go get your education and learn from non-native people. Obviously, yeah. we can all work together. Yeah. And you come back and you can help your tribe. So I saw a need for that. So um, the scholarship, uh, my first scholarship was, I think, 2014. Or, it started in 2013, but maybe 2014 or something. But yeah. it was just very organic, raising money. And, and obviously, with, uh, you know, your help, you know, fans like yourself, yeah. you know, you really help and um, other patrons that have just see a need for natives getting an education. Yeah. So yeah, those, those scholarships for education for schools. Okay, and I think that yeah. those children have a big example in you. Yeah, I mean, they are just, I call it their tickle, we call it, they're really tickle, but they're really just so happy that someone sees them and, and respects them and notices them. It's yeah. really that simple. Yeah. It's sad on one level because you shouldn't have to be so concerned about being noticed, right? You know, mm. that should just be. So it's really nice to see that they they know that someone cares. Yeah. And it's you know it's that simple, and I love that. Yeah, and you and I do. <laughs> and you do too. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, what goal do you hope to achieve with your foundation? I wanted to get. I want the scholarship monies to get larger. Mm -hmm. um, which is going to involve 
Um, right now, uh, the past year or two, I've been trying to get some ideas, obviously help from you, help from the NAI, yeah. help from um, other organizations, nonprofits that are doing something much bigger than what I'm doing. I'm kind of, I'll need some um, education information so I can do what the other nonprofits are doing. So I've been talking to um, a couple other nonprofits to get ideas of how to create my, you know, I'm more like a, a board and really kind of have a more of a focus where, because yeah. it's a lot of work and it's a full-time job. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have, I don't have, it's just myself. I don't have the resources just for myself. So I kind of need to have other people on my team that yeah. can kind of do the daily work. So I wanted to get bigger that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I can't do it myself. I've, uh, it's been too long for me just to do it, and I can't do it. I really want to get a team together. So I just want it to be bigger and, and have yeah. a lot more money to give. Yeah. So I can send my application form to you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> you, where's your tribal card? Do you have a tribal card? Mm, <laughs> What yeah. tribe is that? The Dutch tribe? <laughs> well, I'm a, a, a native Dutch. <laughs> yeah, that's close. <laughs> um, yeah, you have uh, various types of scholarships. Uh, can you explain what the various types of scholarships uh, entail? Yeah, so we have uh, call it the triple A scholarships. We have scholarships for the arts, mm -hmm. so music or writing um, or theater, um, things like that. Um, we have athletic for, you know, obviously athletes for sports, and then we have academics, so just you know the general academics. Okay. So we have we have um, you can apply for uh, not all of them, but choose which one is your forte, and then and you can apply that way. Yeah, yeah, okay, I understand. Um, and which children are eligible for your scholarship? What are the admission requirements? So right now it's just confined to, I had it expanded to Canada, but I wasn't getting a lot of, uh, um, enough penetration there. So I've limited it to the United States, which is not a limit. There's a lot of kids that could benefit. And they have to have a tribal card. So uh, if you carry a card, you can be federal recognized or state recognized. So just as long as you have a card that shows that you have native um, ancestry. And yeah. then of course, you have to be a high school student with at least a 3.0 um, GPA, a grade point average. So we have a certain level of, of um, a grade point average. Yeah. And also recommendations from teachers or coaches or you know, someone of leadership role. So there's, and also an essay, an essay about why do you need this scholarship? Why do you want it? Yeah. And that, yeah, so. Um, you mentioned uh, 3.0 GPA, but, um, yes. well, minimum, minimum. we don't know what it is in the Netherlands. <laughs> um, do you have a, a grading system uh, as far, or a point system? Point system. Okay. One to there's 10. There's a certain um, minimum of um, a type of point system, like you know, just for when you're in school and you and you have to get, um, like when you take tests and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we have it. It's called the grade point average here. I don't. What is it called in the Netherlands? Um, is there something? I that... Yeah, I don't know if there is a, a name for it, but um, okay. uh, when you have a score of five, it's not sufficient. Okay. It's sufficient sure. when it's okay. a score of six. And 10 is excellent. Okay. Uh, so, so it's a scoring system. This yeah. Is, okay. Same thing. But I think it's, uh, well, you know, I've uh, graduated as a psychologist. I yes. almost uh, got, um, how do you say it? My average um, score was yes. uh, eight. So wow. I, how do you call it? I can't. Um, it's a name when you graduate with a high uh, score. High honors? Honors? Uh, yes, with honors, yeah. Yes, with honors. And, yes. and the honor is even higher with honors and cum laude. Cum laude. Oh, cum laude. Yeah. Uh, cum laude. Oh, almost. Cum laude. Almost. I've done one test three times and it wasn't allowed. A maximum of two <laughs> times. I, I really didn't like history of psychology. And I was thinking, oh, okay. let me do just do the test so I can see what the questions are. <laughs> <laughs> 
Otherwise, I would be graduated as a cum laude, as a psychologist. Yeah, but I think this is. Though. Yeah, thank you. Thank very you very much. Impressive, still. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's something like that. You, the 3.0 GPA yes. score. It's a, it's a minimum. Um, yeah. That is probably, um, you know, on the higher level. Yeah. Obviously, the higher level. That level is not an honor level, but it's just a minimum, so we can have at least high achieving students. So obviously, I'm, I want to have yeah. students who apply that are, you know, that are, you know, want to be motivated to work and and you know deserve to get the scholarship. I, I yeah. don't want to just give away. I don't no, no. do that. No, I, I can understand. It should be a yeah. promising child. Yeah. Yes, yes. If you compare the 3.0 uh, to a scale on 1 to 10, could you make... I mean, I would say probably if you're an 8, I mean, a 3.0, maybe 6, 6? 7? 7. Ah, okay. Oh, it's just the yeah. minimum. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right below, yeah. That's the minimum, yes. Yeah, I understand. And you also mentioned that they must have a card. I don't think this is something the people know in the Netherlands. Could you explain about this card, this native card? So in America, um, especially the federally recognized tribes, my tribe is not federally recognized. We're recognized by our state. Yeah. Um, and it's just, to me, it's politics and money, so it doesn't really matter, you know, mm. on, on that level. But to identify us as Native Americans and our blood quantum and our ancestry, um, every every um, Native American has a card with their, kind of like a license, like a, yeah, a, yeah. a photo ID yeah. with a name and our tribal affiliation, yeah. our tribal membership, our membership number, obviously our address and things like that. So it's, an, it's a photo ID that recognizes our, our tribal ancestry. And is this so, a good thing or a bad thing? Because it, it sounds so, also something like discriminating. But it could I also agree, be good. I, I agree with you. Um, it's it's a it's a strange thing. I don't me personally, I don't advertise that I have it. I don't use it as my photo ID because yeah. I have my license for my car, my driver's license. Yeah. Um, it's a bit of a, an exclusionary it's it it's exclusive and kind of in a bad way because it does separate us. Yeah. And it separates us as though I always say I don't I don't need the government to tell me that I'm Native American. I know mm. I'm Native American by my blood, my family, and my and my heart, and my, you know everything else. So I don't need the government to tell me that. So it's kind of weird yeah. to carry on a card that says it would be the same thing. You know, well here I'm this ancestry. You know, like yeah. I shouldn't have to use that card to say that I'm Native, but because of the benefits that the tribes get here um, in America, minimal benefits. It's not like, you know, people are rich by no, any no. means. No, no. Um, but there are some minimal benefits I don't take part of because I don't, I don't, you know, I feel like there's people that, even though I'm not rich, I feel that there's people that are less fortunate than me that can benefit. So yeah. I don't, I don't take part of it. Um, but yeah, it's a weird thing. It's, yeah. Some people would say that it's a bit discriminatory. I see what you're saying. It's very separatist. It's just a weird thing. It, I shouldn't have to identify myself as native. It's a weird thing, really. Yeah. But um, I have it just, you know, we just have it. It's just part of, you know, being affiliated to a tribe. And so I do those things. I use it for voting. You know, we have our tribal voting and things like that. Okay. I have to use my card for that. So, um you know, if I wanted to get with housing or anything, if I wanted to be on the reservation, that card would help me to get a house on the reservation, things like that. Yeah, um, yeah. But I don't, I don't use those services. Um, not really. I mean, I'm not. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You told me you have this uh, foundation since 2013, 14. I mean, I'm sorry, not 2013, 2003. Oh, 2003. Ah, okay. Yes. Um, so uh, the one doesn't belong. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. 2003. Okay. I thought it was weird. It's wow. been a very long time. Yes. It's very long. And do you know what happens to the first children who received a scholarship? Well, um, the first ones, um, one right now um, lives in Washington State, 
and she's uh, they, they all graduate. Everyone that I've that's been a scholarship recipient has graduated from college. Um, there might have been one, maybe one or two, um, with exception because they started a family early. Uh -huh. um, but I was able to help them with other scholarships after they had children. Yeah. Um, but uh, everyone is successful in their own way. They definitely graduated. Uh, the first one, um, she's working for a company uh, up in Washington State that's helping other people. It's not a nonprofit, but it's a type of leadership role. Yeah. So very, very good job. Uh, there's some we have. I have a couple of doctors that graduated medical school. So doctors. Um, I have a lawyer, an attorney. Okay. And, um, um, so very. We've got. I've got some successful recipients who've become successful in, in their career. Wow. So I'm very proud. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to, to see that all this help and now yeah. they've graduated and they can yes. build something up and they can give it forward. And they have. I've yeah. actually used my um, my older recipients um, as part of a program to be mentors. Yeah. There was a, uh, uh, a leadership program maybe a couple of years ago uh, in West Virginia, and I kind of got them together um, and had them come together and help other young children yeah. that were them. So they did. They get. They, they're giving back. They yeah. were you know, happy to be recipients, and so I asked them, can you help me and as an example, as a mentor, and they, they were right there. So yeah. they loved it. Do you, do you know the movie Pay It Forward? Have yeah, you seen it? No. no? Um, it's about a child. It's about a child and he has an ID. If you do something good for someone else and he can give it forward too. Yes. And it's, yes. it's hilarious because um, a prisoner, <laughs> an ex-prisoner was in his house and the parents were shocked, but he just tried to help. It's really a good movie. It's the really? same principle. Yeah. Okay. So if you can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really funny. It's okay. also a sad movie, but you have to look at yourself. But it's a beautiful okay. movie. Movie. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, well, I've asked all the questions um, yes. of the interview. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions for me. Well, I mean, I I'm kind of really excited about the Western experience, and you know if. If things work out, you know, obviously I'd love to come and perform. But you know, I a lot of the times when I talk to people about, you know, when I have fans like yourself and friends out in Amsterdam, the Netherlands, yeah. everyone talks about the tulips. And I remember you gave me the tulips that you yeah. sent to me. But it, you're kind of known for this this big tulip event. Um, yeah. Um, but um, and no, I just I'm very excited. Of, I would like to know. I know in Germany, I've, I've visited Germany, and they're very passionate about Native Americans as well. Yeah. What is the general idea as far as the people in the Netherlands, the Dutch people, how do they feel about Native Americans? Do they find Native Americans like a cool thing? Is it positive? Is it is it a good thing there? Or Yes, I, I think, like? yes, I think they um, are excited about uh, Natives. Um, well, as a child, you play cowboy and Indian, <laughs> you know? And what did you play? Were you the cowboy or Indian? Um, mostly the cowboy and sometimes <laughs> the Indian. Okay. I will explain it to you another time, okay? Okay. There's a story behind it. Okay, uh, great. Okay. Um, but um, when children are young, yes, they learn about uh, natives, but it's also by movies like uh, Pocahontas, Iwata, you know, and so they get a romanticized uh, image about natives. Yes, yes. But they are really interested in natives. That's but great. Yeah, well, like I told you, um, they will make sounds like, Ooh, because they have seen it in movies and yeah. this is how they learn it and but so um but uh, they really love natives That's they really great. do and they would love I to would, see you yeah. I, if i come to you know when i come to the netherlands when it is hopefully it'll be soon yeah i would like to um come to the netherlands and perform in the netherlands the type of image that people do think of natives but also something new and different so yeah. I do want to show um, 
a really cool sign with the regalia and things like that, but I want to show a different side too. Yeah. Um, so that's really that's really exciting because, again, the Native Americans here, people are interested and are excited, but you know, there's a history here that is not you know, in the Netherlands. So, you know, that history is there, but I don't dwell on it. I like to focus on the positive things and how we can exchange cultures. So, to me, yeah. that's the history is there. You can read about it. You know, whatever. Yeah. But I like to talk about the positive experiences and moving forward and the perception that Native people are, we're not people of the past, we're people yeah. that are here today living. Yeah, no, but I think they are very curious to see. But That's I think right. it's the same time when you ask someone in the United States or a Native uh, how they see the, the Dutch people. Well, we, right. I use sneakers. We don't walk on wooden shoes. You know, <laughs> but it's the. <laughs> yeah. I do have them, however, but uh, <laughs> but this is something you you get the image of. Oh, the Dutch people! Oh, it's all windmills, tulips, right. and wooden shoes. You know. And the wooden shoes. Yeah. It's so simplified. You know, it's so simplified. Exactly. And there's so much more to your culture that I would love to explore too. But there's so much more that people tend to. You know, keep it really, you know, superficial and, and simple, and there's so much more to learn. Yeah, exactly. My, just, um, I, you can probably edit this, hopefully. My phone is on low battery, so I want to oh, make sure that we can okay. off during the interview. Okay, uh, just, if I may, one request yes. as your biggest fan. Yes. Would you please sing something for me? Okay, I'll, <laughs> sing, a, I'll sing a verse from... Um, Amazing Grace. Yes. My, um, on my Christmas album, which is my Christmas album. <laughs> yes. I sing a, a song from Amazing. I sing a, a lyric. You um, sing it in, in native Lumbee. language. And late, yeah, in Lumbee. In Lumbee. Yeah. yeah. Just a little, little quick thing. <laughs> yeah. He is what you most hate. One edge, one you. we have a Did you pay day? Me me Wow. Yeah. <laughs> as, you, <laughs> as you can see, <laughs> I'm so moved by your singing. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Wanaira. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for your time, for the interview. Thank you, and thank you, Nane, um, for having me um, on the website. And I look forward to many more um, adventures with everyone from the Netherlands. I hope to meet everyone. Yes, we hope to meet yes. you at the Western Mine Experience. So yeah. yeah, it's 25th, 25th and 26th January 2020. Well, I'm going to pray to get there, so. Okay, well, we'll make Thank it possible. You Thank you, Eric, so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Yeah.